hello everybody i was just mid yawn when this decided to go on so great but anyways hey god nope <laughs> uh uh welcome to the i own adventures a world created and ruled by the fae i'm jessica i also go by i sneeze stars online in places like tiktok and instagram and all that other fun stuff i don't know uh what do the, where the young people are anymore um and I'll be your shenanigan sovereign uh, tonight. Quickly, I'm going to run you through our shows on the channel. Um, Monday nights, obviously, the Iowa Adventures. Hi, you're here. Uh, it's nice to have you. Tuesday nights, we have State of the Union, a Shadowrun campaign at 7.30 p.m. EST, run by Cuddlesworth, um, which I don't think that we're going to have August 1st or possibly uh, the next tuesday after that because gen con and all of that will keep you updated thursday nights we have the lost continent at 9 p.m est by mr markham uh and friday nights we have the legends of kralis at 10 30 p.m est a ttrpg created and dm'd by talarius game master it's awesome come and check it out um alternating sundays and coming to a close is the rumors of magic DM'd by our very own Mazrix24. Um, do not forget to follow us on our YouTube where we'll be posting everything as well as join our Discord and everywhere else that we're online as DM Denial. Um, that's enough talking, Jessica. Kara, would you like to take over? Absolutely. I'm Caro. Hello. I'm Imaginary Caro on TikTok. Um, and I will be playing the Water Jossy Barbarian Gilly. Uh, James. Hi, that's me. I'm James, uh, <laughs> your resident uh, chip fanatic and player of. Uh, <laughs> sorry, as I become a man a hotel for a second. Uh, as I become a man for a second. <laughs> Or of Dezark, our human druid who circled the stars. <laughs> I never say that. I don't know why, but play circle of the stars. Uh, and occasionally, depending on a fated dice roll, I might play <clears throat> Varian Arbor, the smarmy Irish sorcerer that shares a body with him and has a bit of a lilting accent uh, and has a annoying brat of a sister stuck in a necklace on his chest. Uh, don't say anything funny, Mist. I don't think the audience can handle it. Well, you're funny enough. Don't worry about it. Ah, shucks. Uh, and that's pretty much for me. Um, you can hang out with me on TikTok if you want, uh, at Mazrix, uh, much like here on Twitch. Uh, you can also find me as Mazrix24 pretty much everywhere. But other than that, Dunyo! That's me! Hi, everybody. I'm me. Uh, you can find me as the Speed of Candy on all of the various internet places. Tonight, I will be playing Damascus Silver, the half-elf bard warlock who totally remembers what happens three weeks ago. That is what our recap is sort of for. So, last time in AA, episode 64, telenovela Areva. In a whirlwind, <laughs> you like that? In a whirlwind of drama and revelations, Arev found himself in a tight spot wedged between two sexy demons, discovering that his soul was owned by the demon Vistrixen. But hey, at least he got a snazzy pair of golden glasses that pack more power than Varian on a good day. Meanwhile, Damascus got in touch with Tamina to decipher the mysterious Alcal mysterious alchemical formula on the water bearer's bottle turns out tamina was actually the mastermind behind it capable of brewing divine essence divine essence that could make some that could make someone a deity or supercharge their godly powers but of course they still had one ingredient left to uncover and just when things couldn't get any more complicated to meet a dropped a bombshell. Ray Bella was just a piece of an eldest druid. And there's a whole lot more to that story. Um, secrets were spilled and a rev squeezed Roy for information only to discover that they were actually long lost brothers. Uh, 
talk about family drama. Turns out a Rev sister and unknown daughter are the other parts of the pu- of the druidic puzzle. Oh, it's a telenovela. It was a telenovela. Fuck God shit. It, it was a telenovela worthy episode for sure. Stay tuned for the next chapter because uh, that's where we're starting. I believe Arev has run off into his room and screamed at the top of his lungs and everybody else is sitting at the table awkwardly. What do we do? Is there anything that anyone would like to do? Yeah, you're still... Arev is just still <laughs> screaming at the top of his lungs. <laughs> So, should we go after him, you think? Or just maybe give him a minute? Someone should probably go talk to him. Maybe. They they start to hear monstrous slamming sounds. Just... (laughs) From inside of the Rev's room. (laughs) He's having a wild shape or something. (laughs) That sounds very satisfying, to be fair. It does. It's okay. I will go and get him. And you guys see the five to six year old little pink tiefling excuse herself from the table as Roy uh, trips over his feet just a little bit trying to get her. It's okay, Papa. I can go. (laughs) And there's a little knock at your door, Arev, as you have your tem- temper tantrum. Oh, uh, oh, the door is unlocked. Yeah, she's knocking first because she's a nice girl. Um, but then she opens it because her dad is right behind her and he's coming to stop her. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as she walks in, um, of course, her feet fall on, on soft grass, right? As the forest glade of my bedroom in in the condo sort of sprawls before her and i I don't this is maybe the first time she's been in my bedroom yeah so she just she walked out (laughs) she's in a building and now she's not in a building kind of like looking around briefly but to the left of her and, and to the right of her like other than the soft grass in front of the doorway there's just these absolute raked gouges through the earth. And you see n- not one or two, but probably about like four or six, like ripped out felled trees that have been hurled at the wall. Um, so like there's like this r- intricate root system of like the trees that are just like, sideways instead of vertical and just past them the heaving white furred back of a polar bear just she puts her hands on her hips you know as my knight I expect you to be much better than this and be friends to the trees the bear. This is Varian's behavior, and I don't like it. The bear form turns, and the head and open mouth, still panting, looks at this little girl. <clears throat> this is not night of rare behavior. I start moving towards her. She's walking. walking towards you, by the way, with her hands on her hips. I, I I start walking forward, but like as the bear walks forward, which is on its hind feet, which is like a little weird, but like as I walk, the form slowly diminishes until a rev is standing there just in front of Rebella. Are you done your temper tantrum? He falls to his knees. 
And when he looks up, Raybella would see an absolute, like, ravaged face. Uh, a face that looks sunken and hollow at that the sun or moon above us I, what, moon. what time that the, the, the moon above us catches your um, room always has the moon okay perfect so the the moonlight catches just this absolute reflective mask that for the briefest of instances as he looks up there's this moonlight shimmer across his face from the ravaged wet mask that he's wearing of his emotions. And he looks at her through it all and says, you're right. man. I'm sorry. I know. And she's she walks up to you, still hands on her hips, till she's like almost face to face with you. And you'll have to like lean down a little bit so that she can reach up. And she puts her hands on your face on both sides. And she wipes away like any wetness or tears or anything. She thinks she's being as helpful as possible. It's really just smooshing your face around in like different ways. And then she goes, Whenever I have a temper tantrum, I get lots of hugs after. And daddy brushes my hair. So I'm going to give you a hug. And uh, we are going to go and get my brush. And you're going to sit on the floor for me to brush your hair. Okay? Well, I mean... I'm going to brush your hair. Okay. <laughs> and she get, puts her arms up to give you a hug. I hug her back. And she, when you hug her back, she puts her hands in your hair and pets them. And she goes is everything is going to be okay and that I will protect you and she's clearly parroting what her dad says to her when <laughs> she has a, a temper tantrum and we have big emotions and it's okay to let them out sometimes but they can't they can't hurt other people or break things okay so she she's petting the back of his like the, the stubbled back of his hair and like yeah occasionally ruffling like the little bit of spiky mm -hmm. at the top and that's that's why he hesitated because she's like i'm gonna brush your hair and in the back of his mind he went what hair <laughs> yeah and she's like we're gonna brush it that's gonna be good okay we'll scalp massage yeah. and and uh she waits until you're all ready to go You just got gentle parented. That's true, I did. <laughs> you don't want to go outside yet? I can go and get my brush and we can do it here. No. No, Rebella. As you've already reminded me, there is behavior that you expect from your night. I can walk. Yes. Yes, behavior like not hurting trees, but sometimes it's okay to to be sad. So I oh. can do something small and different for you then. Okay, so do you want to see a magic trick? Yes. Okay, and I, I'll reach down and try to take her hand if she'll let me. She'll let you. Uh, and I, we walk just outside the door of my room. And I shut the door, and I turn to her and I go, what's your favorite type of candy? I like lemon drops. You like lemon drops? Yeah. Oh. The D brings them for me from from his mother's house. That's fantastic. Okay, here, watch this. And I turn to my door, and I, I lay my palm flat on it. And then I slowly slide it down to the handle and I open it. And we walk back in. And all of the damage to the trees is missing as they've been reset in their places. And I go, 
sorry that I talked to you about the lemon drops. There's no lemon drops in here. That's not the magic trick. I just sometimes the room needs a second to like go, but um, I didn't See, hurt any trees. This is not very nightly. Now I want lemon drops, and I don't think that we have any. How about go? We're gonna have to teach you some better ways to deal with your anger or distracting people's. And from the hallway, you hear a snort as Roy is just very, like, leaning there watching this happen. I mean, how about I make you a promise that when we get home, mm -hmm. I will buy you as many lemon drops as you can hold. I don't think that you can afford that because my purse is a bag of holding. <laughs> I don't think Daddy will let you do that either. <laughs> Non-magically hold? She picks up her skirt and makes it into like... <laughs> <laughs> like so, it's like a bunch of things. You could just as many as you could possibly. She goes, it's, "Come and let me brush your hair now." I can and do that. I will expect at least one bag. I can do that too. Okay. And you notice that she goes and gets her little purse of God damn it holding. I dropped something. <laughs> And out comes like this like little boar bristled boar bristled brush. So it's like more for smoothing and very nice and soft on your not tangled or long hair at all. And she sits on the on the sofa and goes, Come on. Go on. Do not keep her waiting. I go. You get your hair brushed, which is more just like having you just you just get pet more or less for as long as you'll let her do it. I mean, would you consider this kind of a short rest? <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah, you I, haven't left yet. You guys, it's still morning. You haven't left the house. I Because, like, if that's the case, as she's brushing my hair, could I, like, wild shape into some sort of, like, long-haired, like, if, you know, what? I'm trying to think of, like, like, a, like a, a really, really shaggy dog, like a long, like a, like a sheep. Like a long-haired sheepdog, you know, okay. like one of those ones that are just like, just all hair. That way, so she's like brushing the little things, but then like I actually give her hair to brush, and just like occasionally, just give her like little doggy snuffles against her chin and everything. Just every time you do that, she stops and she she nuzzles her nose back at you, and you get a, a kiss on the forehead, and she starts brushing again. Until she, until she feels like you have sufficiently calmed down. Yep. Which at, at that point, I, I will probably like have like settled sort of like my head, like on my paws. Like I'm just laying down, not even sitting at this point. Probably like softly asleep just across her lap. When she's done, she puts her brush away and then just sits there petting your head. And you guys spent, you guys are there until like it's lunchtime and FaZe has made something for everyone to eat. You guys have just not left yet. It was a, an eventful morning. Uh, after lunch, what would you guys like to do? I think at this point we should probably pack up and get on the road. Yeah, what was where were we going? What was the plan? I don't remember. <laughs> we were going back. Were we going to, to his house? Rev's house? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. We need. We Mom's need to. Mom's house to leave Raybella, I think. 
we need to leave Rebella there with his moms, and then we need to rescue her mom, and then we need to go visit the tree of ancient whispers to maybe get some bark from it. Um, as as a side note, I want to ask, like, as we're kind of as that scene was happening, I think I would be asking a Reb's mom if she knows where we could get our hands on some of the ingredients that Tamina told us about. Okay. Um, some of them we have already. I'm kind of going through our list here, but she's a ranger. She might know where I can find a sun drop flower. <laughs> Potentially. You guys do Worth that asking. all the time, and every single time you've, you've done that, You've asked this question about a sun drop. I've consistently mm-hmm. told you that those come specifically from Beloth and are yeah. normally, if she has cut a tear of hers, has touched the ground. But we need two tears of her. That's yeah, I was no, about to say, we got to make her very sad. That's the, that's the myth, but you know that they come directly from Beloth. Okay. Ask Beloth, putting it up at the top of my notes. Um, Okay, other than that, I ask her if there are basilisks in um, in Rhea. If there are, have been any sightings lately or anything like that. And she goes, I have not, um, I have not heard anything of late of a basilisk, but it's not, they are rare, but they can exist. It depends. I have not heard anything yet. All right. Just uh, something to keep aware of. If I don't know if they have, like, I know they're rare, but maybe they have hunting grounds or anything like that. People randomly disappearing. We'll, we'll keep an eye out, ear out. and As for randomly disappearing, I think you know that the, there are a lot of people randomly disappearing right now. Well, fair enough. All right. Good to know. And then I... I'll actually shoot um, Gilly a message. Just in her head. You Ugh. hear... Oh, I can do that. That's true. Have you done that no, before? Me... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <they have. laughs> All right, don't What's panic. <laughs> uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but... A little tiefling friend that went chasing after a rev she made Stella Bella just appear on our track here didn't she can I can I answer back or yeah okay (laughs) yeah you know what I think I do remember that it was some sort of special flower I'm not a florist or anything but just popped it out of nowhere maybe we can convince her to do the same for us that at least ticks one box off our list of ingredients. It was one of the ones on the list. Do you think it, like, has to be, like, fresh? Or, like, can we just save it? That is a very good question. I mean, I got this bag it's that, like, the shot. that keeps fruits and stuff in crisp condition. Oh, perfect. That's probably fine, then. I'll probably put the power in there. Should be fine. All right, so we'll have yeah. to talk to her about that along the way. Do you often so what all... just stop speaking to whoever you're talking to and stand in front of them? And, and just stare? sort of stare into the distance. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually, he does that a lot. It... <laughs> okay, well, I, I am very glad that uh, my son is hanging around with you. What can I say? I get distracted real easily and uh, get lost in my own train of thought. No, uh huh. And that is why you screamed suddenly. (laughs) I'm a real jumpy person. You seem like it. Okay. Yes, I'm going to go somewhere that is not around you people. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I don't think she lacks us very much. You know what? She's had a fairly eventful day. She's probably not in the best mood. That's true. He did reveal a lot of unpleasant family matters to strangers. <laughs> yeah. 
a rev having a, a, a daughter potentially is a real mind blower. Yeah. So that's like all of that was new, correct? All of it. The story that we had heard up until this point was that a rev was found by this tree and his mothers adopted him, raised him, and the girl in question can't remember her name off the top of my head. Amelia. Uh, that's the one. She they were uh, childhood, well, young adult friends, I guess. And it developed into a little more than that, but she disappeared on him. I got the impression that she was Faye. You more than got the impression. Talon said that. I'm aware okay. of that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes me wonder what his their daughter's going to be like. Yeah, that sounds important to follow up on. Also potentially dangerous to follow up on. Especially if she's got a grudge against the daddy that wasn't around. Yeah. <laughs> Not that it's his fault, but... I mean... <laughs> From her perspective. <laughs> That's my thoughts. It's usually exactly. not great. Hmm. She might be a little less than pleased to see us. But wouldn't it be nice? Sounds like a interesting place. I'll have to check out. I don't think Why? anybody's told us that it's a tower. Why right? does it sound uh, like it? Yeah. Uh, yes, did they, they did say that it's a brothel? Oh, okay. Roy I told you. Remember. And then I will. I mean, it just seems like. Somewhere Why should... are you so interested in going to a brothel, Damascus? I don't um, hate it, mate. We get it. No, we oh, don't oh, get oh. it. <laughs> no, no, we don't get it. I don't think we get it at all. <laughs> Faze's, like, crossed her arms. Why are you so excited? I didn't say. I'm excited to meet Rev's daughter, who apparently is working there, though I hope it's, you know, What is there? They something are wrong independent being... women who are <laughs> using their abilities and talents. Yeah, exactly. Hey, yeah, sex work your is fella real. Fella supports uh, <laughs> a strong, independent, business-minded ladies. I really thinks really, very hard in her I head. I really think that we should just drop this subject before Damascus ends up sleeping outside tonight. Um, that's just me. Uh, but I'm happy to watch this go down. <laughs> and uh, Winter takes an apple out of out of like the pantry and just takes a bite into it. That is. Hey, Faiza, is lunch ready? Can I help you prepare lunch? It's it's all here. It's at the table. I was just gonna come and tell you, and I heard about you being real excited to go to a. Brothel. <laughs> that was a less good distraction than I was hoping. <laughs> this is such a good try. <laughs> Eat your food, Damascus. I made it with love. Don't I appreciate it? Uh huh. I sure will. sounds like it. <laughs> Billy thinks oh, really hard in your head. Sorry, mate, I forgot. But she doesn't realize that message is not still a thing. So she's just thinking that real hard in her head, just in case. You have a wand of whispers. <laughs> I do. You too. Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> Gilly probably doesn't remember if she's got it no. either. I just love no. that so much. Amazing. Uh, unless eat? there's anything anyone wants to do at, at, at lunch. Not at the moment. Right. He's already stepped in it. He's not stepping in it more. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, give me a give me a perception roll as you guys eat. Oh, like roll and dice. What's That's my a good roll? That was a bad roll. Twenty five. <laughs> Eight. You <laughs> you don't know. You're just eating. What <laughs> is good? Uh, with a twenty five, you notice immediately when Faza 
cuts up an apple for herself and takes a few bites of it and then kind of just sets it to the side. She likes apples. Those are her favorite. I, I, no, I will shoot her a message. Apparently I'm just talking in everybody's heads today. Something wrong with the apple, darling? Hmm? No, I just, I just don't like him. I mean, I do like him. It's just an apple, though, and I kind of guess just don't feel like an apple right now. It's really Bad. weird because I have like these memories of like really liking apples, but I don't think I like them as much as I thought I liked them. I will switch to talking out loud. Is this a thing that's... with the stuff that's switched? That's mm-hmm. what I think. How long has this been happening? I don't know. A couple not... days? Yeah, not that long. I just don't seem to like them as much. Maybe I ate too many. I just don't like them as much as I used to. Maybe you overdid them, but maybe this has something to do with Tamina throwing Atma into you. Tamina did not throw Atma into me. But, but Bella throwing Atma into you. Atma getting thrown into you. Maybe, I guess. It Maybe seems she like doesn't like apples as much. Like apples. Is there like she a likes... fall fruit? They, they're they good. No, don't get me wrong. They're good. And they they sound like like they're good and they're really nice in pies and stuff. But like, I remember like just really loving to eat them all the time and then be like so sweet and juicy. And, and like I'd much rather have that over like anything else. And now it's just, it's just okay. Nah. To humor me. Um, I'm going to get my my water. Do I have vegetation? I do. Good. Um, I'm going to get my water pouch, mm-hmm. and I'm going to. What's a fall dress? I'm going to turn. I'm going to make it taste like apple cider, which I feel is okay. a very fall version of apples. And I'm going to okay. offer it to her, and to just be like, take a sip of that. Tell me what you think. She does. That's good. I like that. I think it'd be better warm. Kind of just tastes like cinnamony apple juice right now. I take it back and go. <laughs> it sounds like something's changed in you. From um, Tamina's, um, Tamina, Atma's having an influence on you. On. Um, what you lack and something to keep an eye on or potentially Tamina was having an influence and no longer is also a possibility go either way or both (laughs) I mean it's a lot more lonely in my head without Tamina oh I mean, you can reach out and chat with any of us anytime you like. You know that. Yeah, but it's not the same. And and Atma's very quiet. He's still probably getting acclimated to her new abode. I'm sure as she grows in strength and power, she'll she'll be a little more chatty. She just feels sulky right now, and that's it. Do you blame me for not wanting to chat? Yeah. It's I'm sure it's I'm sure it's all right. I mean it's always been like this that I remember, so like I don't I I don't know. It's fine. I I kinda have like two memories there. I remember uh Tabina. But then I remember Atma being there, and I don't know, it's weird, and I I think I'm just going to leave it alone and not think too hard about it. It's always a good strategy. It is my strategy for everything. <laughs> I think it works quite well. Mm-hmm. All right, if that's what you want to do. 
and just worry. I don't want her... I don't like the idea of her changing you, is all. People change. People change, and you're more than willing to change if your tastes change and your preferences change, that's fine. As long as the changes are under your control, your discretion, your decision. Just don't want you being forced into something you don't want to do. I mean, I'm not. I don't know. It's not like I really would be able to tell. I just don't like... I think this is a little dramatic. I mean, I just don't feel like eating an apple. You're right. I'm probably just blowing things out of proportion. But you'll anybody even remotely paying attention will notice that he's like kind of darting his eyes between her and Winter and wondering like how close to being like Winter has she become? Where Winter was like infused with the soul of Winter and became very much something different than than Revan ever was. Well, Edgar likes coffee. Mm hmm I think you once gave Threven it and he thought it was disgusting. Mm -hmm. Winter didn't like coffee, but didn't. But yeah. now, get now, now yeah. is like, yeah, I, I, I see the appeal. I need coffee. Yeah. I think that's that's where Damascus's thoughts are. Are is Tamina, or Tamina is Atma, not necessarily taking over, but like changing her. And if so, how? And if so, how much is she going to? And is this bad? And do we need to get her out? And he's he's just worried. This is yeah. new and bad. And he doesn't have anybody to spiral and be paranoid with. I mean, you can try and spiral, spiral and be paranoid with someone when you're alone. Like, mm -hmm. go to someone. Yeah. He will. Pass. Just put it on the to-do list. Spiral and be paranoid. Oh, yeah. it's on. It's on. <laughs> Um, but he'll let it go for now. He doesn't want to like freak phase out too much. Yeah, she seems just like eh about it. Like I used to remember liking them, but maybe I don't like them as much as I thought I did. That's it. Um, Fair enough. Yeah, and if if that's done, then you guys finish up lunch and head out. Hit the road. Yeah. Hit the road. Okay. Yeah. So, you guys are all packed up and traveling again um <laughs> uh ray bella is riding sasha like he is her mount um or she is he she we don't, I don't think we ever know we never came what gender sasha is I, I was pretty sure we identified sasha as female okay then she's riding it as that's her mount um and she's Having a great time. She's also keeping up with a rev as you walk. And behind her uh, is Roy, who is like almost hovering his hand behind her back uh, in case she goes to tumble off this tiger. <laughs> um, and you guys are traveling. Uh, is there anything that you guys want to do as you are traveling through the woods towards a rev's home? Uh, Ely's probably jump. gonna. Hmm, no, you go. Uh, I'll jump in if nobody else wants to. I want to try and just kind of fall into step beside Sasha and Raybella, and uh, he's going to. I'm just gonna. <sighs> From what I can tell, you did a wonderful job of calming a rep down. You must be very proud of yourself, as you should be. That's because I'm a big girl, and Daddy taught me what to do when I have temper tantrums. So, you're such a big girl, and you're so smart. Good for you. I no longer rip the heads off my dolls. <laughs> I'm sure your dollies appreciate it. <laughs> Personal growth. Yes. Uh, they all have lots of string around them to keep them their heads on now. 
didn't want to get new dolls because I became friends with these dolls and and just because I ripped their heads off a few times does not mean that I don't love them anymore. Yeah, they're still your friends and then you can still take care of them. Their heads are mostly attached now if you tie them back on, so it's all good. And besides, like you said, you're a big girl now and you don't need to worry about that. You're way too smart to do something like that again. Right? Yes. Unless they betray Raya, then their heads must roll. That is perfectly understandable. Yes. Speaking of you being such a smart little thing, I was hoping you might um, answer a question for me about... You're such a expert on trees and plants and growing things. I was wondering if you might... Roy's looking at you like, why are you speaking to my daughter? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Roy. <laughs> um, I will minor illusion a Stella Bella. You, you say, want me to make that? Can you make them just out of nowhere? It's a very pretty flower. She gives you the sassy side eye. Why? Because it's so very pretty. I was hoping other to have flowers. Them. You no, want the other flowers. flowers. You're going to get poisoned. I and wasn't you planning need it? on it. Do you, do you get poisoned if you eat it? Or does it make you better if you eat it? It makes you better. So well, you're going to case. get poisoned somewhere? I wasn't planning on it, but you've seen that sometimes me and and Faza and Winter and, and Gilly and your favorite night a Rev we get into dangerous situations. And what happens if a Rev gets poisoned? I, I can't cure poison. A I Rev don't know can how. cure his poisons. Who can? A Rev can cure himself. What happens if he's if he gets knocked out, falls asleep? He might need some help. What if he's Varian? Then let him die. No, it's fine. Um, <laughs> it's also a <laughs> Okay, fine. <laughs> if you can't, it's all right. I don't want to ask you to do something that's that's hard to do that you can't do. I didn't just... say that I couldn't do it. <laughs> I didn't say that I couldn't. And you notice, by the way, she is wearing your hat and she is a completely blue elf. Mm-hmm. from head to toe um and she puts her hands up like this and she kind of goes like this a little bit rubs them together breathes in them and holds them closed and you see there's like this little purple glow coming out from between her fingertips and as she opens her hands so that they're palm up there is a Stella Bella well, isn't that beautiful? Yeah? You can have it, but it is not for free. Um, I will call over to Gilly. Yeah? Uh, you know those uh, uh, message you the word chocolates? Things that oh, you can get yeah. sometimes. Maybe we uh, give one to the little one. Got it, mate. <laughs> little girl, do you like chocolate? I believe you did last yes. time, right? We have established that I like chocolate, <laughs> and I will <laughs> accept chocolate in trade for Talabella. Seems like My a fair deal to me. decided to tease me with sugars, and I did not get any. <laughs> that ain't nice of him at all. How dare Bye-bye. you tease your princess? For being so helpful, I will give you two chocolates. Okay, here. And she gives I you the Stella Bella. Nice. And she immediately shoves the chocolates in her mouth and munches. And her dad sighs. And has just kind of given up. <laughs> she needs the energy for the march. It's fine. Yes, because she needs the energy so much that she is walking onto her own. The brown and the tiger don't look easy. Meanwhile, she's just like... stability. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's the... like, 
druid crafted a harness for herself that just <laughs> around she's not even like trying she um, can just like flop around little yeah. vines <laughs> little vines um, um i get like a little bottle that i can put the plant into so it doesn't break and then i store it in my bag with my apples my bag of preservation very one good, more can good. put it down <laughs> yeah a Stella Bella, yes, that is the one thing that you guys didn't decode. That I, I yes, we didn't. Oh, I thought we knew that we needed that. Did Dan that was the that one out? thing because everything else here is written out for you guys because you guys, no? uh, yeah, the the a celestial okay. flower that blooms from afar, a beautiful star. I Never. guess I figured it out at some point because I have the thing. I copy and pasted it into my notes, and right beside it, it says Stella Bella question mark question mark question mark. Yeah, there you go. Why is my dog barking? Chill out. Mad. Um, um, so. Other than that, yeah. As you guys travel through the jungle, you're traveling at like a much faster pace with Ella leading you. Um, there is a certain point, though, where she stops. Mm-hmm. And she don't you don't even have to roll perception check. She hears it before you guys even like get close to her. A moment. And if you guys uh want to roll me stealth as you get closer. Oh. Fourteen. I have advantage on stealth checks, apparently, at least according to my little sheet. And I rolled Mm -hmm. an 11 twice. So (laughs) that's that's a 13. (laughs) Okay. Uh, That's an 11 for Damascus and a 13 for Faza. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, What did Winter get? Winter, yes. Uh, Well, Winter has disadvantage on stealth, so let me just roll disadvantage first. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh you know you know what? Let's just let's just give him that let's just say he rolled a six. Okay. Cool. So as you all <laughs> just tromp your way through this uh jungle. I picture us doing the tries- thing, like she she stops and then we all just run into the back of her. Yeah. <laughs> um It starts with Gilly just kind of taking her, bumping her forward, and just, like, the rest of you all just kind of pile into it till she falls out into this clearing on her knees uh, and just looks back over her shoulders at you with a glare, like, and she then she looks over at a rev, and and she's just like, "I, I taught you better than this. And as, <laughs> as, as, absolutely as she, fishes, sir. <laughs> you guys, uh, it's immediately drawn the attention of what is in this clearing. In the clearing, uh, you guys see two treants. Um, one is black and withered with very few leaves on it. It has like a large split down the middle um, and kind of looks um, like it's dying, sort of. Uh, The other one is tall and healthy and full of leaves. Uh, You know, its bark is almost uh, glimmering in the, in the light that it catches um very t- very slender for a tree but poofy with its hair like a dandelion um it has very expressive features on its face does anyone want to like roll insight absolutely i i will openly admit i was double checking to see whether it's weird I was like, did I prepare speak with plants today? <laughs> I did 13. not. 18. Okay. With a, with a 13, Gilly, you pick up 
the tenseness of like you surprised them kind of thing and uh with an 18 you pick up distress as you you pick up distress what do you do in this moment um i think i will i mean i look at a rev to see if there's anything he is going to do as our resident druid not knowing if you stopped speaking with plants he's like <laughs> rev, do, do we, what do we do they can they understand us a, a rev you, holds as up a you hand. have this conversation though you see like there's a small sod of grass that kind of just pops up around one of them and is running circles like almost like it's a puppy around the sick treant A rev looks at Damascus. Uh, hold that thought. And I try to reproach my mom. She she's she hasn't she's picked herself up. And I like I, I wearily stop forward. Like I I keep my awareness up and I just try to like look at all angles, but like mostly keep my eyes focused on the treants. But as I approach, I just go. I have been gone for a while. This is new to me. Do you have any idea what's going on? No, RF, I have not asked what is going on. Can you ask what's going on? Can you not ask what's going on? Uh, I might be able to ask what's going on. They speak common. Oh. Ah. That solves that problem then. She's looking at a rev like he has completely just lost every bit of training that she's given him. You know he... treants can speak common. He looks at her and goes, I don't like to assume She gives you Hello, this trees. look. <laughs> Hello trees. As you <laughs> as you do that, um there are some awakened trees that kind of stop, that move and look at you and then begin to usher you all forward so that you're Whoa. into the circle, so that you're going forwards towards these trants. Um What what do you do? Do you friends. let them? Yes. Yeah. I don't fight it. <laughs> hey, Rebella's a friend of the trees, right? Does, does she have any? At this at this point, this uh, Roy Roy has picked up Raybella and he's walking in front of the trees. Like he's like, okay, cool. Treants. This mm -hmm. is they're respected elders of the forest. Yeah, that's my thoughts. I don't think Damascus would be trying to fight. I'm on board for meeting some trees. You're on board for meeting some trees. You walk the 60 feet up to the trees and um Howdy friends. You're the tall willowy one looks at you and goes What brings you here? making our way from point A back there to point B that way. Druids. Rangers. I see you. Is there... Is there something amiss in the forest? I... There was one thing, but we killed that. You're welcome. The one of the trees, uh, the awakened trees, just pats your shoulder with a branch, Gilly. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
Druids, I beg, I beg of you, help us. And it's at that point where the the black entry kind of goes, <laughs> oh no, don't. Uh. And the willowy tree stops it from speaking. She dies. Decays. I, I apologize, friend. Yes, I'm Do natural. You, I was going to ask. Um, do you know what ails your companion? Are you familiar with whatever this is? I do not know where this rot comes from. I get cast a side eye at Damascus. <laughs> and then... Uh, do I... A little bit of carnivorous, carnivorous grass sod kind of runs up and headbutts Damascus in the shin. Doesn't yeah. bite you. What was that for? It, he's young and rambunctious. I like lean down and do the thing where like I tussle its hair. It flops and just <laughs> gives you and, and you can see its whole body shake. It's very spunky. When you stop, it headbutts you again. I, I, Reb, do we think this? I still do it. Do we think what I was doing this might be a magical thing? I could try and dispel it. Well, uh, you and I have the same thought, Damascus. So why don't. Do you remember the day that. The day that you met Varian. All right. When you touched the painting. Well, I was drawn to touch the painting because of something that I know how to do. Uh, takes a little bit of time. But if you have about a half hour to spare, I can simply detect magic around us. And that. Uh, at the museum, I was curious, so I did a little ritual to grant myself the ability to detect magic while we were there. I thought perhaps we might encounter some rare magical artifacts that would help us at the time with our problem uh, in that city, and instead I got landed with the soul of a sorcerer sharing my body but the technique is still there so if you can you know keep people from bothering me for about a half hour i can do that ritual a second time and i have the thing where i can just do that i don't know yours might have more capabilities it's what does, yes. what does yours do? Let's see. What does each one what does each one of yours do? So mine, like the spell, Detect Magic, the first level divination spell, says that for the duration, which is concentration up to 10 minutes, uh, you sense the presence of a magic within 30 feet of you. And mm. if if I sense magic in this way, I can use my action to see a faint aura around any visible creature or object in the area that bears magic, and I learn its school of magic, if any. It says mm. this, the spell can also penetrate most barriers, but it is blocked by one foot of stone, one inch of common metal, and a thin sheet of lead, or three feet of wood or dirt. Okay. And what does mine yours do? Pretty much, mine's pretty much the same thing, except it is blocked if it's behind total cover, and it doesn't last very long. Um... That's one turn. Mine doesn't cost me any resources because it's a, a ritual spell beyond time. You'll so, definitely get more information if if a rev does it. 
because of I don't how think we're much... pressed for time, right? We can just chill. No, we're not. You're not yeah. pressed. I'm yeah. fine punching hang things. Hang out for a half an hour. Uh, so Damascus will say, uh, Gilly, you're welcome to try. Uh, this feels that tree hugging, hippy dippy druid nature stuff. All right, Ian, big magic time. Hey, Ray Bella, you want to play catch? Yeah, I want to play catch. You, I have arrows that you could catch now. Arrow? Maybe we use like a pine cone? <laughs> I can make one as she makes one. <laughs> Perfect. Wonderful. Let's do that. As you as you actually go to play catch and that first uh throw, um a dog comes out of nowhere, grabs the pine cone, throws it away, and then produces his own little ball, which is Dodger, uh Arev's uh <laughs> Arev's puppy. Lovely. He's a little ghost doggy. And you guys will play Absolutely with play that. Um while you cast, you sit down and you cast. Um, Faiza is going to sit beside you and begin casting something herself or trying to do something herself. Uh, so what does it look like when you um, when you ca- when you cast the spell, Arev? So Ritually, I, I I sit there and um like li- like literally sit like I I take from my standing position I sit and take a very relaxed relaxed posture sort of like flex and sit down before going <sighs> and then instead of looking around I look up. And I just stare at the sky blankly until the vision of my eyes grays over and I'm no longer looking at what's in front of me and my imagination begins to run wild, vivid with myriads of colorful sparks floating across any which way, formless, shapeless, and to those looking at me, my eyes will have glazed over with white. And there's just the the faintest sheen off my body that it, it... You ever know how you, like, look at something and sometimes it feels like your eyes can't, like, latch on? Like, almost like, like you keep, like, looking away no matter how much you want to focus on it? Mm-hmm. Think homework in high school. You just, like, you can't focus. Right. Uh, that that kind of effect is sort of like emanating off my body in slow waves. And then as the, the half hour sort of transpires, that unawareness, that that aura of non-focus is pulled back into sharp reality. And if you were looking at me, it would almost look like wherever you looked my body would be in super fine detail. Like, e- even if you had difficulty seeing, you know, needed glasses, corrective vision, somehow I would be more visible to you than than normal. The density of magic around me just, like, supersedes into my body in a way that... <laughs> a that, <rev> like, is 4K. <laughs> I, 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 I am in 4K. And, and be, being in 4K... To the natural eye, I now am linked with the 4K visibility of magic. Um, and I open my eyes. Um, with that, you see that necromancy has definitely been something that this tree has been touched with, which is odd because, again, very new to the world so people don't really have um a grasp on it that much you know what i mean uh and it also looks like it's been 
almost give me give me perception check uh with advantage as you kind of get a little closer and start looking in the tree. Arev, whatever you're doing, I trust you to do it immaculately well. You got this, as I give you Bardic. Bardic. I love Bardic. Thank you. You're welcome. It's a D8. So this is an investigation check? Uh, yes. You know this has been the tree has been touched by some sort of necrotic mag- magic um that is draining its life force. I got a 10 plus 0 okay. plus 0 plus 7 plus 7. Plus plus seven. Plus seven. Okay. Heck. So that's definitely coaster. enough to see that <laughs> that split that's in the tree that was created by acid and very intentionally like uh, someone was trying to get something or like that needed to be made to do something um, from beside you Faze's eyes have kind of clouded over and they're instead of going black like they used to, they're almost this like really dark maroon color. Mm. And she puts a hand up and says, I I can talk to it in its head. And it's it says that there was someone that came when it was asleep wasn't alone it had someone with it and they bound it before it even woke up and were using something that started draining the life from it and then they took out acid and started pouring it down its mouth and and until it ate away into the center of it or they took something out. And it says that it was supposed to keep it safe. Something the eldest druid gave it when it was just born. And it's also asking for us to kill it. Yeah. We have any idea what the thing that was taken out of it was? Can it show us an image, maybe? It doesn't really know. It was placed inside of it when it was young. It wasn't. It was wrapped. Um. um the size uh, of like a fist. Did it see the people? Who did this to it? It says there's nothing there. That its memory was wiped? That, like, they're outlines when it thinks about them. Hmm. Hmm. Is there any sort of existing druid lore about anything being hidden in trees that Arev or maybe Ella would know? Or Abella? You could ask. Hey, you guys know anything about this? (laughs) Arev's just been, like, borderline speechless because, like, to to have heard from one of like the sacred like beings really like the the these inhabitants of red that like it it wants us to end its life like he he's just been struck down dumbfounded but then he he hears you ask you know do you know anything about this and 
do I? <laughs> um, there would definitely be stories of such of like people hiding things in trees. Um, you know that there are rituals that like okay, give me give me a history check. History, okay. Yeah. Um, and I'll let you do it with advantage. Ooh. Good, because I rolled in that one for my first roll. So let's see. That is not much better. That's a nine. A nine. Um, I think I you're really I'm... shocked right now, and it's just not coming to you. Uh, this is treants are ancient and have lived such long lives, and now there's like one that. They're they're keepers of the of the jungle. They try and keep peace, and now there's one in front of you that you've just found out has been held down and more or less fed acid to get that crack going inside it to get what it wanted, and it's just begging for you to kill it. Um, yeah, shell shock. Yeah, shell shock. Um, Roy does have more information for you. And he says, "I we, we does can anybody talk about have it. while we're while we're doing this? Does anybody have healing spells we could use on this poor tree?" I mean, I have like you can try like healing word. Just um, figured while we're standing around, I'll I'll try it. I'll kind of walk up to it and be like, "I don't know if this is going to help much, but it's worth a try." And uh, I'll cast. Reach out and like put a hand on it and cast healing word. To see if it does anything. You cast healing word and you hear <laughs> like almost pain. Like you're hurting it. All right. All right. I take my hand off. It worth a shot. Didn't seem to go well. I don't have anything else that's gonna be able to put it back together do we want to try and it ain't magic it's acid but I can try dispelling dispelling it see if it does anything boom there is something that I can do Damascus and it's not trying to dispel magic I <sighs> I do know an ability or a spell if you will uh, let's call it, uh, what is it. I mean, I know what I know what it's called in Druidic. Hang on, I just need to translate it to common. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm carry the sound. Uh, gr gr um, gr greater renewal. I th wait, what? great, great est renewal, great grenadine renewal, no, grenadine renegade, no, the grand of the greater that renewal, takes. greater restoration, N no, uh, greater renewal. <sighs> it's uh, it's a transmutation spell. Um, uh -huh. My magic forces one willing creature that I can see within range to expend great energy as I kindle its body's natural healing processes for an instant. Uh, I can cure one pu uh, pusin. One pusin? One, po one, one pusin, one poison or disease afflicting the target. The target also gains one level of exhaustion and regains hit points equal to 25 plus my spellcasting modifier, Plus a number of d6s equal to the target's constitution modifier. But it has no effect on constructs, undead, or creatures that are naturally immune to exhaustion. So... So this is a thing that I can do. What do you do? It's worth a try. Is it, is it going to take a lot out of you? Uh... It's going to take a, a small chunk of my greater reserves, but not so much that I'm worried about it. Worth a try, then. 
I I walk, I walk forward and I give the Rayan Knight salute mm -hmm. to the treant. <laughs> Hand flap, he's in a cross. Uh, <laughs> that's now canon, isn't it? Uh, but I, I walk to the tree and I hand flap he's in a, in a cross. And I then take a single knee and hold my hands out and say, Do you have a preferred way to be addressed? A name or an honorific? It can't talk, guys. It's literally got its fr it, it it got acid. Basis connected to its, its brain friend. Though. Could tell us, isn't it? Isn't she? You can't. Uh, do you want to? Do you want Faza to tell you again? She stopped when you guys took over. I can do detect thoughts on it if that'll make it easier. It's probably lower level than whatever she's using. A way to be addressed. Okay, so let me think of a name for it. Its name <laughs> is. Oh, its name is Willow Stub, but it's not a willow. It's just a blackened tree stump so you don't know if it was the willow I pass that on to Rev it calls itself willow stub it also here it killed me none of that we're going to take care of you willow stub in honor of the re relationship between the citizens of Rhea and your kind. I would like to cast a spell on you if that is okay. Nod your bark if, if that is okay. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna, I need to roll some or something. Hang on. It, Damascus, you're connected to it for the next minute? Uh, yes. It says no. It says no. Why not? Do you uh, hmm? do not wish to be better? Uh, Damascus, you get immediate, like, it's just funneling information into your head. Like, you're probably getting... Can you can you take a D4 of psych if damage is all of this is like getting almost screamed at you? Sure. It's one. One. And you, it's don't heal me. Healing pe healing spells don't work. Whatever spell is cast on me, it feeds something else. My life is being taken and used somewhere else. I pass all that along it doesn't want us to heal it it's like when i cast healing word it's just gonna harm it more something's connected to this thing and is draining it it's it wants to just be done uh i'll i'll ask the tree directly would dispelling whatever happened to you break the connection we can try that maybe healing would work then you don't know. She does. It doesn't know. Just pain. That's where it's at. Uh, Everything hurts, I'll, and she, she doesn't know. I'll turn to a rev. Let me try and dispel whatever happened to it. Whatever necromantic garbage was done. Whatever's connecting it to wherever the energy is being sucked to. Maybe then your spell will work. Do you want me to work tell you the DC before you do it? Um. Sure. I'm going to give myself Bardic Inspiration before I do it with my once a day free Bardic Inspiration thing. DC 22. Then, okay. I'm going to do it just at third level. I uh, will try and dispel it. So that guidance. is. <laughs> and guidance. <laughs> and guidance. And guidance. <laughs> and bolstering magic. And bolster with bolstering magic, too. Uh, plus a D3. All right. Can't hurt. 
I'll just roll a d6 and divide it in half. I'm, uh, I'm just, like, and as Damascus shared what he was doing with me, Arev just takes his shoulder and goes with a simple go for it. Go That's for it. it. That's guidance. He leaves his butt pad again. It's always a butt pad. <laughs> oh, it's good butt pads. That's a little strong, maybe, for a red. <laughs> okay. And just a charisma check. Let me add stuff up. 15. I, I got it. 15 plus um, 4 is 19, plus my 5 is 24. As you... What does it look like when you dispel magic, Damascus? Um, I think what I would like to do is I'm actually going to cast two spells at once, if that's okay. Just one of them being kind of the flavor of this particular dispel magic. Um, okay. But I'm just going to kind of reach a hand out, put a hand onto the part of the tree where the crack is, where the big split is. And I'm going to hold up my loot, my loot of light, channel some energy and just try and reach out to my connection with Beloth, my my little bit of uh, divine magic that I can pull from her. And I'm going to try and basically cast daylight directly into this wound to fill it with light and hope that the light is strong enough to break whatever dark necrotic energy is is connecting this thing to something else. So I just as wanted you, to like burst with radiant energy from within As you it. cast, as you use your loot and you reach to Beloth to try and cast this spell, you feel bomb laugh inside of you and almost cut that connection and take over. And he goes, in your head, you hear, I'm the one with <laughs> that's good with healing trees. Help me out here. And I just figured tree, light, goddess of light. There was a connection. You it made sense in my head. I'm your light becomes green and becomes these like almost butterflies that sort of um entomb the tweet the tree. Tons of these little butterflies begin flying around the tree and going down into the tree, into the tree's open uh acidic ma and start like giving it butterfly kisses oh. and you see something begin to change and this dark almost steam begins to rise out of the tree it's still dying it's still been very badly hurt but it looks like you've dispelled what is ever what, what's connecting it to whatever is did this um that's when i'll turn to rev all right i think i broke the connection the healing it if it's gonna work now's the time you're on mute thank you <clears throat> so do you want to test that with lighter healing, or should we just go guns blazing and see what we can do? That the thing that happens. gives back like three hit points or something dumb like that. By I, this I'll... point, uh, Ray Bella has left your playing because you've been distracted and is also at the tree with you. I don't know. Uh, you, can't, you can't you have to mend it first it's wood right, mending. and she puts her hand out and casts the cantrip mending and she has to do it like three or four times to try and get the wood to just start replacing itself I, I'll go on one side and start pushing to like push it closed uh, on the Wait, other I... side, uh, the the other tree is the other tree ant there is like that's a good idea and starts holding the tree together from that side and uh, winter helps you like 
push yeah, it from the I other side. I am not strong enough to do this on my yeah, own. Yeah, Winter actually, Winter comes and starts helping and she's able to mend together like this big gnarly scar that goes up to where the tree's mouth is. I was going to say that like as as she's doing that, uh, a rev would sort of come forward and she's mending, right? Mm-hmm. But I would sort of like druid craft vine stitches, mm-hmm. if you will. So like she's like laying her hands and kind of like moving them up the bark. And like I, I imagine sort of like a soft like glow or aura like warming into the tree as where she touches it. And you just see like ripples sort of like bringing life back into the bark and a rev would just like sort of cup the base of her hands and as he does so just trails his fingers across and where he touches he's just like lacing across the warmer bark with like vines and the two of them together that are climbing all the way up and keeping it sutured and together yeah and and together my niece and i with with a little help from like Damascus and and the other tree and and Gilly, just about halfway up, she goes, "Papa, lift me!" <laughs> <laughs> she turns him off. So you guys uh, can keep going all the way up. Roy comes up and saddles next to me, and imagine gives me a stink eye, but I just sort of ignore it. No, he's real proud of his daughter in this moment. Ah. Uh-huh. Okay. And you guys are going to heal her now? Yes. Um, I will. You know what? Instead of greater renewal, <laughs> Papa, leave me. <laughs> Sorry. Um <laughs> Leave me. I as Raybella Ray gets lifted by Roy, and we we finish the the stitching. I pull my hands over, and lay them on top of Raybella's on the bark, and I look at her. And look at Roy. And then I look to the treant. And I say. And, and, and I interlock my fingers. With Ray Bella's on the bark. And I say. Stay with me for just one moment. Steady me. And. Warmth begins to flow out of my hands and into the bark of the tree and my hands and knuckles tighten ever so slightly around Raybella's hands not painfully but just reinforced that magic is coming from our combined strength and I will pump a fifth level cure wounds directly into the tree and as you do that at some point uh you feel roy come up behind you and also put his head on top of that he goes i I mean next time a little warning of what you are going to do she is still only six and you feel that a lot of the magic that you're also taking like you're drawing more on his magic than Ray Bella's because Ray Bella's starting to look super sleepy. <laughs> well, I wasn't trying to use her magic. I was yeah, just trying to like... Yeah, but she's helping. She's not going to let you do it herself. Or she's not going to let you do it yourself, right? Yeah. So the, and as she looks, looks sleepy and Roy is holding her, I just sort of like I angle my short, shoulder and torso so that while he's holding her, she has somewhere to like lean on almost like the back of a chair mm-hmm. and uh yeah so i i pump a fifth level cure wounds into the treant um you notice the the black and withered bark begins to um 
I can see him brown again. Give me a perception check. Yeah. Uh, you can do advantage because you're, again, right up close looking at this. Okay. Hey, that's a nat 20. Nat uh, 20. For a perception of 25. The brown has pink swirls sort of going through it that are the exact same shade as what uh, Raybel Raybella normally looks like. Ooh. Interesting. And she's like, I think we did good. Did <laughs> Dad take a nap, Dad? Now, Daddy. <laughs> Yes, yes. And he's immediately like put her over his shoulder and pats her back. You're very strong, but maybe we don't reach this far, okay? It's I know that hmm? I know that this isn't how the ability works, but can I use Song of Rest to play her a little lullaby and help her get a good nap? You can. I take my little lute and I start playing just very soft little. When you for her. should have magic and people who put her to sleep as good lullabies. Go to sleep, princess. Okay, good night. <laughs> and she starts immediately drooling down her father's shirt. <laughs> my gosh, that was beautiful. I love watching it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> The oh, tree uh, I, magic I, times. I go and I, I'll put a hand on, on Gilly's shoulder and just say, if it weren't for you, I wouldn't have been able to do that. That little pat on your butt is what juiced me up enough to break that connection. I, I got a three on that. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have, <laughs> I would have got a 21 and we would have failed. Nice. <laughs> so. uh, yeah. The other tree and that is there. You can see it's shaking a little bit. Like, you saved, you saved my wife. Your wife. Oh. What? Yeah. Oh, oh. we did a and good thing. They're fully like leaning into each other. And the, uh, I believe her name was Willow Stub. Yeah. Looks at you. And, she, but you notice, by the way, she does look like, she may actually have bits of like long thin tree branches that might grow from the top of her head when she's feeling better. She looks Hello, you, not but... a stub. <laughs> Thank you, druids. You stub are... is a married name. Hmm? Stub is her married name. Stub is her na- married name. <laughs> You are my saviors. Um, somebody give me a history check. I'll do it again. Or an intelligence check. No. Not a good one for me. 16 for history. You think that maybe with that 16... I mean, asking a tree how to get something from a tree willingly might be a good way to get information. That's true. Um, So what is it? We're looking for a piece of the alchemical formula, right? We are Uh, looking for uh, a piece of ancient skin from the first tree, for the first being of Rhea freely given. Which, which we're assuming the is the, the bark. Tree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ms. Willow. I, I know it always feels like odd timing to come to somebody you've helped with a request because you should be focusing on your recovery. But ask me and I will give you anything. 
Do you know where we might locate some part of the eldest living thing of Rhea? <laughs> oh, it hurts to laugh. <clears throat> you, uh, you uh, have no small request. I mean, what, what do you need of it? Is it one of your kind? No. What it is, is it? A tree in three places, but a still tree. together in one. Is there a uh, are, are we able to get to this place where all three are one? They can all be one at either tree if you are worthy of it. Hmm. What do you do need of it? Damascus? <laughs> He'll, he'll take over. We need no small thing, unfortunately. But we need to ask for it to offer a piece of its of its skin, of its bark, of its own free will. A big boon. Indeed. Something that you mentioned worthiness. We're hoping to be able to prove our worthiness. As we helped you today, we are friendly with all the creatures of the forest, all peaceful creatures. We're hoping to prove the same. Find one of the three if you are worthy. You will know when all of them are there together. All trees have a face. You just have to find the right knot. And then you ask, and if you are worthy, it will release a piece of its skin to you. Thank you for the knowledge, friend. It would have been most helpful. Thank is there, you for is saving there something... my life. wouldn't have been able to just walk away. I think I speak for all of us here. Do you know, is there something we can do, uh, a service we can perform to prove our, our worthiness? I do not know that. If you are worthy... Something will happen where you will need to prove yourself. Stand. Leave it in the will of nature, then. As all things should be. I nod. Be balanced? Perfectly balanced. As all things should be? No? <laughs> I, I will nod appreciatively and then just uh, trying to like shake his hand or pat it on the back doesn't know how to uh, like a little branch actually as you're trying to do that um the other tree that is there um his name is asher and oh. <laughs> takes your hand in one of its like trunks just very gently and uh leaves you with a little acorn Ooh, a little acorn yeah Aww. or a gift it might help if the tree knows that you are friends to the trees 
I take it very gingerly and say a most appreciated appreciated gift. I will honor it and treasure it. Thank you. And as you, you try to be so, as you try to be so like, just thank you, uh, you know, for this wonderful gift that carnivorous saw jumps and headbutts you in the stomach. I almost drop it. Almost. You almost drop it. <laughs> almost drop it. Oh, all right. Okay. He's that just a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what do you guys do? I suppose we should head on our way. Yeah. There's not really any more actionable stuff with the tree ants since we don't know who did it. So I guess we're just filing that one away. So put a pin in it and deal with it later? Yeah. Although, not to... We- not to offend the tree ants, I didn't. I don't mean to like you know put a pin in a tree ant. <laughs> no, uh, never. Uh, uh, I hurts to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking we better go visit the first tree on an arev day. Probably oh, yes. we want to be friends of trees. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about it. They seem to respond to me, so yes. As you, uh, so are you guys walking on then? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Because that enca- that that was a combat encounter that is gone. Ooh, was a you combat guys encounter? did that without it was yeah. If you had not you fight the tree ants, we bring um, peace. We are a friend to the forest, madam. <laughs> it the reason it's not a combat encounter is because you had someone you have someone who is well liked fall with you right now, Ella is making traveling home so much faster. Hmm. Um, Thanks, Mom. <laughs> thanks, right. Mom. And is taking you, like, the right way to everything. Um, as you do walk, uh, Faza will kind of pipe up and be like, we've seen those, those holes, those... They look like Someone was there, but they're removed in 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 people's memories before. Oh wait, was it like um, what's her face, wizard? Was it like was it like how that was? She's definitely seen them. Yeah, um, you've seen them in uh, in dreams as well. I think. Oh, I meant the disappearingness. Oh, uh, no. No, no. Okay. When have we seen that? As Damascus searches his memories and I search my notes. And comes up blank. I don't remember who it was. I just remember that they were missing memories of people of who we were looking for. That person was removed. I think maybe some of it had to do with Edgar and and that girl Gwen I'm not sure Hmm. oh this we don't blame you for not knowing honestly any why would you blame me? I'm just rem- I'm the only one who remembered it. <laughs> I that's exactly it. We're trying to say like don't Wait, feel bad. Wait, you come up with that you don't blame me immediately after that. That's totally like you blame me, Arev. <laughs> no, it's more of a uh... <laughs> I'm I'm you know what? I should scout ahead. Clonk, 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 clonk. Winter? Winter? Useless. <laughs> oh, man, you did it. It's She's not... so much more emotional lately. I heard that! <laughs> it's more... 
it, it was meant as more of a thank you. I was appreciative that you still you just had. Say that was a good, a good. You could just you, you don't have to say it in like such a negative connotation. I have difficulty with my words. You've since heard when? Uh since always. <laughs> Just because what I say sounds coherent doesn't always mean that it's, you know, logical. And I understand that you're off your game since we got back here and Varian, you know, was taking over more. But you could be a little considerate. It's all I'm asking, okay? I gave you information. I was the one who remembered it. You have to, I obviously, you don't blame me for not remembering because I remembered. You didn't. I... I can't even. Uh, look, the next time you have a um, extra planar entity uh, erase, what was it, four weeks, a couple months worth of time? Yeah. Uh, next time you have an extra planar entity that shares a body with you, which I know you're familiar with, but that robs you of your ability to be present at all and then doesn't even bother to spend the energy to create memories that I might uh, stumble back upon when I do happen to be present. Um, let me know. How could he do that? Uh, it's still my body, isn't it? So then the memories are there, you just can't see them. But why can't I? That kind of feels like a laziness on his part. Or maybe your part. I mean, I've tried. Try harder. Don't <laughs> just blame everyone else for your issues, Arav. And she stops away. <laughs> that probably could have gone better. Yeah, but that's on me. No, I, I, I mean, get what you're trying is, to say. Yeah. <laughs> But she seems to have kind of a bee in her bonnet today. Is she typically this uh, reactive? Oh, no, usually, no. Normally, she's very calm. Um, mm-hmm. I no. You know what? For the first time, I have no suggestions. What do we do? Good forward, I guess. I'm a little concerned about Faze, I'll be honest. That it ain't like her. She's been different since whatever happened with uh, with Atma getting put inside of her. Hmm. Y'all have seen this sort of thing before. Is this typical? For people with gods inside of them? It's don't know if I'd say typical. It's different. Faza, me and Rev and and Edgar and we were born this way. Faza wasn't. She had someone stuck into it later. It's definitely a change. She was Not also mention- created, right, rather than. Born. Yeah, you went wrong. I don't know if that affects anything. <laughs> well, Maybe. I suppose all we can do is keep an keep an eye on her. Yeah, that's what we'll that's what we'll do. Appreciate the help in it, just to see if there's any more strange behavior. I mean, coming up with with Edgar and and Gwen and. All of that probably set her off a bit, too. I think they were a different branch, maybe, of a similar kind of organization that kept her and her brother as sacrifices. So, I mean, there's definitely some issues there. Touchy subject, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I'm wondering if the thing she's remembering, the, the outlines... The people involved in harming this tree are part of that cult, the cult of the the unknown. Oh, 
object or the unknown. Yeah. It only makes sense that you wouldn't be able to know them. <laughs> I'm putting that down my notes. <laughs> actually tracks. A lot of this yeah, is okay. their fault. They are the ones who killed Threven. They're the ones who trapped Belloth in the sky. Might be the ones who opened the door and let Tamina come back, which is what led to our lovely friend and the eyeball in the sky and all of that fun situation that we're dealing with now. I don't like them. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Y'all have dealt with a lot of wacky shit. I suppose I'll probably have to deal with the wacky shit as well now. It just don't right. seem to stop coming. But uh, we should lovely. probably catch up with her at some point. <laughs> oh yeah, which one would she go? <laughs> You can hear her yelling at Winter mm-hmm. in like okay. in a direct in, in a certain direction. So you guys can like no, she's walk great. that way. She's so. fine. She's fine. She's fine. Never mind. She's yelling. Everything's at fine. That, that part normal. yelling at Winter, hundred percent normal. Back so maybe to I'm just being paranoid. <laughs> you guys run to well. you guys run to catch up with uh, them. And um, Ella, who went with them, and uh, continue on. Does somebody want to roll me a d6 to see what encounter you guys are going to run into last? Go for it. Sure. Roll a different one, because I dropped that one. (laughs) Uno. Let me see. Let me go through. Okay. It's a good Um, roll to... Use a one on. <laughs> this is this is like you're so lucky that you have Ella with you. <laughs> so as you as you travel, you come across a river that stops you in your tracks. Um, it stands between you and the way forward. Uh, the water runs slowly, flowing gently around like boulders that are, have been smoothed by uh, rushing water. Um, that almost sort of make a path across the water. You'd have to jump, but they're there. You know, it's like a little bridge. Uh, the surrounding area is like lush ve- vegetation, thick foliage hanging over the river, providing um, a canopy that lets through little bits of sunlight here and there. Um, there are birds chirping and singing in the distance. It's the sound of the jungle mixed with soft rushing water. Um, the scent of the air is just very heavy with vegetation and almost like wet dirt. Um, it's very calming. There's a pathway of rocks through the through the river that connects the two sides. Um, what would you like to do? I would like to cast Water Walk on everybody. Ah, to cast water walk on everybody. <laughs> you, I've got a thing for this. Do that. There we go. It says up to ten creatures. So we're good, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And because Ella is with you, uh, and James is not here right now, oh. so she <laughs> won't talk to him. She turns to you and says, nope. um, "Hello, <laughs> hi." Be careful. This uh, this this area is known to have um, Alpamax in it, um, which are a uh, like a a beast, a chimera uh, with the a very big uh, bear trout type thing that come out out of nowhere out of the gra- the water and um, eat you and drag you to the bottom of it. So. Uh, water walk right. is helpful, but you must be quick. And we are going to roll to see if there are um, Alpmac. Daniel, roll me a d20. High, there are none. Low, there are some. 
Why are you putting this on me? Some bro? is so so vague. Just some. Miss Miss DM. Yes. We are attempting to cross a waterway. Mm-hmm. So um h- how wide is the waterway? Let me check. Do we have another creative solution? Um, you can already walk on 30, water. 30, 30 35. 35 feet. Yeah, we've got water one. Oh. So, I mean, I, I don't know how deep it is. But... Deep enough that, um, actually, here, I think if you go into um, the NPC area where I put BBGs and NPCs, I'm pretty sure there's a picture of one in the place for Rhea, for Thon. I think it's like the last thing. Yeah, you'll see what an Alpamac looks like. Okay. Uh, NPC. Ah. Yeah, they're bear big. <laughs> okay. They're bear fish. Big old bear fish. Okay. So it's deep enough for them to live there. Pretty deep. Oh, 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 oh okay. Um, (laughs) so here's what I'm thinking. I know a spell called the bones of the earth. It is a sixth level transmutation spell. Mm -hmm. Uh, my range is about 120 feet. Um, and it says I cause up to six pillars of stone to burst from places on the ground that I can see within range. Each pillar is a cylinder that has a diameter of five feet and a height of up to 30 feet. The ground where a pillar appears must be wide enough for its diameter, and I can target the ground under a creature. Y- yada, yada, yada. Uh, each pillar has an AC5, 30 hit points. Cool. Anyways, so um, theoretically, that pillar doesn't have to be completely vertical, right? So if I see a point on the riverbed, I could like angle this pillar on this side at like, I don't know, like a 30 degree angle and go shunt. And then on the other side, I could get a 30 foot pillar and go shunt and make kind of like a, arcing bridge that we can just like walk up and walk down it's the bridge you could i mean um, like I'm... <laughs> you have to be able you guys are going to be have to be able to scale a pillar at an angle because you're making a more or less a triangle yeah i'm I, i'm making more i i was Watch 30 i wasn't thinking like a, like a 45 de- i was th- kind of thinking that doing this because each pillar is 30 feet so, like, one pillar itself would get almost across the 35-foot uh, river. What stops it from falling? What what stops gravity? Do additional pillars on the sides going what up. What if we put, like, pillars around the top, and then we attach cables with vines to those pillows? <laughs> almost like it's suspending. What if we pillars? just build a suspension bridge? <laughs> I, I think I hear what you're saying. It would by doing it sideways, it would just well, yeah, flute. Uh, I guess okay. Isn't it like embedded in the ground though, where it like comes up from the ground? Well, that's that's what I thought. It was like you just sort of like do do and like which is fair. But then you're you're taking your fat asses all the way across. <laughs> <Hey>. So <laughs> like <laughs> you have a tiger. Tigers weigh weigh like eight hundred pounds. <laughs> That's fair. We can um, maybe at least send the baby <laughs> across the bridge. I'm not this... opposed to this. Just figure out a way that you can keep it in the air. I feel like if you just do two pillars on either side of it coming up from the riverbed, and it that would just kind of like hold it in place, right? If it went like between like 
Okay. Um, if you put, okay, you can make these pillars. Yeah. <laughs> if you make the pillars on each side, or Ev, this is your mother, I can make plant gro growth between them, and we make we make a nope rope so that you can walk uh, across. No um, I, I could also, in theory, uh, like transmute this spell. Uh huh. Because it it deals bludgeoning damage if like a creature was going to get pinned. So mm -hmm. if I if I like meta magic it, could I like turn these stone pillars into like I don't know wind pillars and just create gusts of like wind that just shunt us across the space? Ooh. That could be fun. Okay. If you're going to do that and you're just gonna like make yourself a cannonball. <laughs> That's kind of, kind okay. of the thing. Just, I will you... allow this. I will allow this, but you are going to have to roll bludgeoning unless you have a way to land because you're getting flung into a tree. We can't literally walk on water. <laughs> we Run could, across. but there's bear sharks. <laughs> there is High potentially low. bear shark. What, what are you asking get? what I rolled? Yes, I'm asking what you rolled. You rolled a, a three. three. There are potentially... There are potentially bear sharks. Yeah. I I'm I don't want there to be bear sharks. Hang on, wait a second. <laughs> I would wait rather there not be bear sharks. I, I am very interested in there not being bear sharks. For fuck's sakes, guys. <laughs> um, At the Faza is going to uh twin spell um Vortex Warp. Vortex warp, but I was about and to that. immediately the cat and the child have been put in the other side of the the river. Oh, that makes and she can do easier. that. How many more spell? How many? That's a second level spell. A lot. She can do it like another seven times. Oh, oh, easily. hey. <laughs> so not only can she do that, but I was preoccupied with my 6th level spells and not my 5th level spells, where I have Dimension Wall door. of Stone prepared. Ooh. For fuck's sakes! <laughs> and she just takes you can get me across! For fuck's sakes, Arev! And then she immediately vortex warps both Gilly and Damascus to the other side, and does Ooh. it again for uh, Roy and Ella. Just despite me. <laughs> You're coming across with me, and Winter flies because he can fly, uh, <laughs> and gets oh. to the other side. I Go mean, ahead, I, make the wall. I, I can also fly, actually. So, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> as she does oh. this and gets everybody across, I just kind of snicker and go, <clears throat> "No, it's okay." And then immediately my body begins to glow in a cascade of light as my uh, constellation of the dragon rolls over my back. And these spectral wings, uh, astral dragon wings, just emanate from my back. And I fly into the air and she just looks up coast at you. over. She goes, fuck you! And then she dimension doors across. <laughs> <laughs> and I just... Go ever so daintily with my glowing starlight body form just land with my beautiful astral dragon wings on the far side and uh go i guess i could just could have carried you all over this lasts for 10 minutes uh... i i i mean i don't want to travel anymore with you guys <laughs> <laughs> Winter, just couldn't just you have just carried us too? Do I look like a goddamn taxi service? I, mean, I couldn't have carried the tiger. Okay, come here. That's come right. here, Damascus. Come into my arms. And I he... Creep into his arms. <laughs> he takes off into the air with you as you are bridal style. And he's above the water. Do you want to see how many there are? <laughs> And he lets your bottom half go, so you're dangling. He's still got you, but like, 
Rude. What's what's the matter, Damascus? What's the matter? Look at him like he's super rude as I check to see if I have Misty Step. And I do. And I Misty Step out of his (laughs) arms onto the ground. He laughs as he joins you. Just having a petty party night. Yeah. Yeah, You guys are grumpy pants. (laughs) Starting the way that we did with uh, all the telenovela drama was just Mm -hmm. set the day off and um, set the tone you guys continue bickering and traveling having avoided being eaten by some alpamac um just try to make us do a combat try (laughs) and make us find anything (laughs) refuse eventually as you travel um you get to a rev's home and um you see that the house is nestled in the heart of a tree. Um, its of winding it is. trunk is gnarl is gnar- and gnarled branches forming the walls and the roof. The entryway is a whimsical archway made of intertwined branches, and inside the space is illuminated by you know shimmering globes of light suspended from branches. Um. The floors are made of smooth, polished wood, and the furniture is crafted from branches and vines and pieces and and pieces perfectly formed to fit the organic curves of the space. Um, There's a staircase that spirals around the trunk of the tree on the outside, leading to hidden rooms and cozy nooks. where uh, there is bark that's been peeled away to reveal soft moss- mossy cushions inside of them. Um, it feels like a house that is also alive and m- like a very magical, beautiful place that you would have loved to grow up in. Um, I want you to know that this is precisely my shit. I love this. <laughs> like this is not probably Gilly's scene, but Caro is living for it. We love it. Uh, I have a picture somewhere that I will show you after this of what your house looks like. Yes. Um, Gorgeous. I have the picture in my head, so I hope the picture matches. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep it in your head that no uh, you get home and and you know um, some you have a few uh, people that work for you. Um, Two of them are not home right now, but when you get inside, the house smells like fresh break bread. And <laughs> your chef is in there. You know him. He's he's a male tiefling, red, elderly, white, white hair. Uh, his name is Pistachio. <laughs> <laughs> and he's taking out some fresh break bed bread from an oven ella invites you all in make yourself comfortable she's hanging her weapons and her cloak up by the door uh sasha immediately goes to a cushion of moss and begins to roll in it make yourself comfortable what do you do i would like to go find Mr. Isle Noodles. Mm-hmm. You want to go out and find him? Sure. I, I, I would like to, yes. Okay. Um Mr. so Mr. Uh, Isle Noodles. He has, he uh, has he, uh go ahead. Uh so Mr. Isle Noodles is uh one of be- being a knight has afforded me uh, a few um, vassals of the state, if you will. Um, I So one of them is a uh, falconer uh, that our house uses as sort of a huntsmaster. Uh, and uh, so I am going to go find uh, Nimbus Isle Noodles. Um, because <laughs> I need to ask him about carrier pigeons and I have a child screaming my name. I'll be right back. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, so Arev disappears. Okay. Um, just kind of like, I'll be back, guys. Chill. And leaves you with Ella. Um, yeah, he's immediately flopping down on some of that moss. That sounded comfy. There are also, you totally can. There are also cushions and uh, chairs as well as like a couch. It's like they have made themselves a nice place to live. Um, okay. And she gets herself she takes out some wine for you guys. She offers everyone a drink and she'll sit down with you. And, uh, um, uh, Pistachio is in the middle of making dinner. Uh, apparently, uh, Danae was home not more than a few hours ago. She went out to catch something to eat. So. Um, you have a lovely home. Thank you. Quite nice. Quite nice. I'm surprised the tiger fits everywhere. The tiger, if he did not fit, when he did not fit, would just climb the tree to <laughs> the top and force his way in, her way in. So we made room. Tigers tend to fit anywhere they want to. <laughs> I'd imagine. I also did not like being trapped under a tiger while I was sleeping. So, <laughs> so I I probably shouldn't ask this, uh, just like etiquette wise, but I feel it may be important. Um, is there any other like life changing information you've been <laughs> withholding from your son? <laughs> because I feel yeah. like it might be best to just get it out all at once. Uh, another to my knowledge, I'm I'm pretty sure that I have told him all of my secrets. Oh, thank God! Probably for the best. Though maybe Danae has more, as she has been keeping some from me. Great. Mm, it's gonna be an interesting dinner, then I imagine. <laughs> she sits down. She's sitting there. She just takes a drink of her wine. She's got her I'm legs sure crossed. That you're back. Oh yeah, do we know how long she was gone? Uh for Ella? Yeah. Um you don't. No. Hmm. Seems to be returning home fairly casually. Well, they're rangers, right? So they have oh, to yeah, take... It's quite natural for them to have to be off on their they own. They range. They range. <laughs> um, she'll give you a tour of the house and uh, like where you'll be sleeping. If you so choose to sleep in their house or use your uh, your hut and all of that. Yeah, it'll um, be rude to say no. <laughs> feels like weird. <laughs> Uh, we'll take a five minute break here okay. and come back. Good call, good call. Yeah, I need to right. walk around. Be right <laughs> back, everyone. Yes, hello. We are back from our uh, five minute break. Um, you guys are you've had the house tour from Arev's mother, Ella. Uh, you know that Danae is around. She just went hunting to get food for tonight. Um, and Arev is off looking for the falconer. So, um, you can check his like normal haunt if you want to uh, go there. He's got a he's got like a place where he keeps birds and such. Uh, that's you know uh, about thirty feet away from the main house. Definitely, I'd be knocking, trying to try, trying the old usual, the old usual haunts, if you will. So you go to his, um, I guess it, it's called a frig. What's it called? An aviary, sort of. Is that what yes. they call it? That's what they call it. They call it aviaries. Uh, and you see Master Eisen Noodle, Ice Isle Noodle, 
Isle Noodle. Isle Noodle. What did I? Isle Noodle. Y- yes, you named him Isle Noodle. Nimbus Isle Noodle. I was like that. It's I- it's capitalized weird. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, I'm obsessed yeah, with I did. This man. Isle Noodle. Um, and he's also a red tiefling. He's a strong, young. He's in his like late twenties. Um, long black hair that's braided back over his shoulders uh dressed for i mean dressed in like leathers and things that are for rough rougher work good old aisle noodle aisle noodle <laughs> and as as a rep turns the quarter he goes nimbus Well, when did you get back? Oh, shit. When did you stop being 12? (laughs) All right. Okay. You leave for, like, what? A year? And you think you can come back here and start picking on me again? That's not. Like, come on. I am very good at my job and people grow <laughs> and Arev comes up to him and just immediately slings an arm around his shoulders and starts like ruffling a hand in his hair and he goes I'm not picking on you I'm just genuinely happy to see you flourishing it's nice to have you back alright that aside oh so he didn't you didn't just come to say hi because you were back god got got it you need something from me well what 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 can i do for you master can can the coin not have two sides jesus look (laughs) who your dad was insufferable enough in this position like come on seriously he trained all those freaking birds to like come by and drop specifically wet branches Every time we asked him to go get like firewood, like it, yeah, you did. had, like what what was up with that? <laughs> he didn't like being told what to do. I yeah, but like it affected him too. Did he just enjoy the smudge that much? Yeah, kind of. Uh, yeah, whatever. I look. I, I'm just grateful it's you here and not him right now. You you don't even know what I've trained my birds to do. <laughs> so, I mean, well, don't say that yet. No, uh, fair. Look, I'm just hoping you've trained at least one of the falcons to uh, stoop itself to the level of carrying a message. I mean, maybe not the falcon, but I have a pigeon. Oh, you branched out. Yeah, I have a couple different types of birds. Oh, thank God. Wait, do you have turkeys? As you say that from behind you, you hear. I turn around. I turn back. It puffs its chest out. That's amazing. Don't okay. get too close. I. He's vicious. I won't. Okay. Um. But I do have this, and from Arev's seemingly empty hand. He does one of those things where he just sort of like, and he's holding up a wooden coin. Okay. A wooden nickel. Okay. And this is a token of a friend of mine's. And friend have a name? Callum. Was he was he more than a friend? I mean, come on, it's been a while. Like Nimbus. I know you fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Nimbus. What? <laughs> Look. Uh, it's fantastic that you know that I fuck. <laughs> but can you just do me a favor and have your darn carrier pigeon 
just I don't know, circle the city or something. Um, this coin is supposed to here. Let me and I like I I play with it a little bit and just kind of like rough it back and forth and try and activate it. And uh, nothing happens because Callum told you to snap it, and then he'd be there immediately. Ah. Uh... You, mm. what are we trying to do with this? Do you want me to flick it at someone? Do you want my bird to drop it on someone's head? I was I was kind of thinking that your bird could bring it to Callum, and okay. maybe that might let him know that it's not an emergency per se. So I don't want to use the coin, but I do still want to see him. If okay. that makes sense. So, you have been gone a while, so I'm going to let this pass. Um, but there are certain things like scrolls of sending that we keep at the house in case we need to contact someone in the city about something. Which I know you've been gone a while and you've probably been hitting the weed a little too hard being out in the in the wilderness as you do. No, I okay? skipped that part. <laughs> he laughs. All right. Hang on. You see him go into uh, the back room and you hear him ruffle with like fumble with some papers and he comes out with like it's a really crunched up scroll of sending that he clearly has just like shoved somewhere. Mm. Here. Is he hey, hot? Him best. Ah, so he is hot. Yeah, I gotcha. Okay, cool. Nibis. Look. Mm -hmm. Yes. I understand. Booty call. No. I understand that magic is more effective. Uh-huh. But, okay, look, so you're not 12. Um, You're, what, no. I, I'm, 16 I'm, now, 17? You fucking asshole. I'm 27. Oh, uh, uh, time does fly. Okay. Um, sometimes from my experience mm -hmm. people appreciate a um non magical effort okay so do you want to like write him a love note and we can attach it to one of the pigeons I, maybe i'll just write him a mess i not a love note just it's definitely a love note. You're kind of turning red a bit. And that's my color, so. I think we've talked before about you not using the color of your natural born skin to judge the way that mine looks when I get in Flustered, a moment. Turned on. Uh, sunburnt. You know, it, it's hard to tell the difference between sunburnt and turned on. Let's be honest for a human. I mean... I don't think so. One of them hurts. I I cannot leave that one alone, Nimbus. <laughs> He's really enjoying this. He's watching you struggle and he has the biggest grin on his face. Look, Callum Callum has done a couple of favors for the realm. He may have even worked with Mom a few times. Um, He like you, uh, is fond of his beautiful bird. And the bird? Maybe I know the bird. DM it is a hawk? Uh, and his name is Trixie. Trixie is a falcon. Trixie is a falcon, okay. Trixie is a falcon. Um, uh, it's a falcon named Trixie. 
You see him. I'm going to roll something for him. <laughs> Fuck you. Oh, that Callum. <laughs> he is hot. A... No. Nice. Hey, actually, uh, you you need a message sent to Callum. I can get you a message sent to Callum. He rolled an eighteen. Ooh. He knows Callum. Um, biblically, <laughs> well, probably <that's> interesting <laughs> because, because I don't. Um. Uh. Well, uh, if you are done hazing me and getting everything that you have failed to do in the last year out. I am never done, but I will send you a message for you. Let me write it for you. I can even do that. Wait, we have a scribe. I know I'm I'm stepping on duties here, but let me write it. Dear Callum. And he takes out a pen and a quill and he's like, or he takes out a quill and ends some parchment. You're eyes are like no no and i just like i snatch it back from him (laughs) and i like scratch it out and just say please come visit and i like do like i like write out my mom's address and like say see you soon (laughs) and that's it (laughs) (laughs) he gets he actually does go to a falcon instead of one of the pigeons and he goes okay go see your girlfriend and off goes the one of the male falcons and so i turn to him and go ah so that bird too fucks oh yeah (laughs) oh yeah uh and he'll actually bring you into the back where uh there is like a, a like a young falcon he goes that's what that's one of their children I approach and I sort of like coo and pick it up a, back. Pick up a worm and do my best to feed it and immediately just um I think she likes you. Like her. And then I look him dead in the eyes and I'd be like yeah. Please tell me this isn't another one of you your your giant falcon breeds and that you were hiding before I left? No, it is literally... First of all, those birds are majestic. Nimbus. And second of all, Nimbus. this is literally... This is, this is Trixie and, and, and Mumford's son, daughter. Mumford? Yes, Mumford. Wasn't Mumford the runt of the last litter? Yeah, so we're 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 sizing down. You you know how genetics work, right? Yeah, I'm. It's gonna be fine, okay? You can't look how cute she is. Her name is Sunflower. Look at her. I stare at Sunflower. <laughs> and in the back of my mind, I realize how big sunflowers grow. And I just realized we're probably screwed. <laughs> she's like, she's a couple months old and she is, she is the size of like, <laughs> of almost what Trixie was. I turn to Nimbus and I say, if she gets, if she gets any bigger. She gets any bigger. She's gonna be a beautiful lady. You 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 call me. I don't I don't care when, why, how. Um, um I you had enough trauma when they came and collected the rest of them. Um she gets big, you call me and I will come get her so that 
They don't go to a farm upstate. Wait, they don't actually go to a farm upstate? <clears throat> what happened to my birds? Thanks for sending my lesson message. I'll see you later in Invis Bite. Wait, what happened to my birds? Is he does he walk away and leave? No, Nimbus. And he just now realizes that his his giant falcons were were murdered. And Nimbus someone's is a dinner. BG. He's got it out for you. I didn't um, take the giant falcons that were not allowed to breed. It was the state. <laughs> Fuck the state. Definitely. Also, Nimbus is my new best friend and son, and I love him. I love him. And <laughs> <laughs> we're never leaving here without him. Nimbus ale noodles. <laughs> the falconer. Uh, <laughs> oh, poor guy. Yeah. Um. After you sent your uh your message and you head back into the house, uh you managed to get there just as uh Danae is coming back with um with a, a handful of rabbits. It used to be a fun conversation. And she looks at you. She goes, You're back. Um, and she and... immediately hugs you and gives you a kiss on your cheek. It's my boy. I missed you. Wait, I saw you before this. Well, not you. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, I, I I met Varian. Um... I put my arrow to his back because I knew he was not you. But I mean, that means you put an arrow to my back. It, it could be a doppelganger. You never know. Hey, what you usually know. What? It Wait, looked exactly what? like you. But, but why didn't you know? I did not know you had someone else inside of you. It... No, that's valid. You can only work the with the information that you're presented with, right? So, okay. And Makes how sense. did your mother take it? Why don't you go ask her yourself? It's going to be a good night, I see. And she opens the door and walks in. Walks over to Ella, gives her a kiss on the cheek, goes in to go and see the chef. What do you do? I walk back in and I look at Ella, my mom, and I just say, does she know? That is a lot. That does she know what? Mom. Does she know about me? Uh, it doesn't get answered by Ella. It gets answered by Danae. She comes out and she goes, of course, I know about you. What? You think she didn't carry you for nine months? Or your sister? Hey, Rabilla, you want to play catch? Hi, uh, hi, Auntie Danae. Ella oh, yeah, looks I at that's new too. <laughs> Ella looks right. at at Ray Bella, looks at at Danae, and goes, "Oh, so you know her as well?" <clears throat> and uh, Ray Bella runs up to. Auntie Danae to get hugs. So, this is going to be a an interesting night, I think. Perhaps um, 
Perhaps we put the little one to bed first. Mm -hmm. That might be wise, yeah. And she looks at Roy. She goes, Where were you? Trapped in some, I don't know, lair of a monster that made me forget everything. Huh. Well, at least it was a good reason that you were not there with the people that I needed to bring across. Are they alive? Yes, they're going. They're going with, with Wolf. That's not his name. That's not his accent. But we lost it. But it's okay. <laughs> and uh, she's going to take Roy and Raybella upstairs so that there's a room so that she Raybella can, you know, have a bath and uh, get changed and all of that stuff. And a meal will be brought up to them. The rest of you, would you like to eat together or would you like to eat alone in your rooms tonight? I am very happy you are here. However, there will be a fight. Yeah, if you all want to have some family time together, yeah, I'm happy to just skedaddle. It's definitely some things that y'all need to hash out. and uh, Take an early night. It's a family yes. issue. Uh, you love let me riff. bring you to your rooms. And you just see Ella pour herself another glass of wine, sitting there, <laughs> cross-legged, arms like... Yes, uh, we will have food brought to you. Appreciate it. Uh, and you, so you guys sorry, are brought to different rooms. <laughs> <laughs> and we flee. We flee. And uh, arrive, it is just you and your mothers and Sasha. So, you both knew something about my birth that I did not for this entire time. Yes. I mean, most parents know something about their children's birth that their children do not. I... I'm trying to piece, to piece this together because I have been alive for 34 years. And I know maybe that seems inconsequential to people that have elven blood or, or long-lived tiefling, tiefling blood and stuff like that. But to a human, 34 years is a very, very long time to not know more. It's a very long time to not know the truth. I'm here. I'm here right now. So why don't you tell me? Uh, Danae looks at Ella because she's not sure how much you know. And uh, Ella's like, you already know everything. And Danae will look at you and go, it's um, it's not something I like being brought up. If... Uh... Yeah, I uh, could see how, you know, not telling your son the truth about his existence and instead letting him believe some sort of falsehood for 34 years until he finally tried to follow in your footsteps, take up the mantle of knighthood and do something good for the realm. How, yeah, it would make sense to maybe not, not tell me the truth of who I am so that I don't. What truth are you missing? Oh, I don't know. You um, still are who you are. You had two loving parents. And I'm, 
still missing something. Yeah, you both love me. Uh, yes, I can come home and you are here and somehow safe. No matter how many dangerous missions you take, no matter how many dangerous the beasts you catch, collar, and take off the land to release it into the wild, no matter how many post-storm clearings you tree of, uh, sorry, free of fallen trees, despite the fact that some are hanging precariously and might injure you, no, somehow you've always miraculously come home, both of you, off of every mission for 34 years. You sound very bitter about that, Mon, Mon Amour. It's not bitter. It's... I'm worried that the second... I'm worried that the second that I begin to really look at everything you've done here, that our story will unravel until the point that it is unrecognizable. What do you mean? Arif. And Danae uh, reaches out and kind of takes one of your hands, if you'll let her. I don't. She takes her hand back. Um, looks definitely hurt. She goes, I know that... It must be hard growing up not knowing who your sire was. But I have loved you as if you were my own your entire life. And it's your not... sister. Hmm. But I will admit knowing that my wife has stepped out on me was very painful and I did not want you to know the person she stepped out on me with. He would be around more. There would be more I love you. She looks at her wife. I love you. <laughs> but I can't keep you when he is around. You said that I sound bitter. <laughs> and I don't mean to. But, uh, no, no, but, and it may take a day, it may take a week, but you have to remember that I've finally been shown the truth for the first time in 34 years because you didn't feel like telling me it. Because you thought that you knew best. No. And that best was to I not I did not tell know me. best, Rev. I was selfish. I understand this, and if you wish to know him, you know who he is. I had only hoped we would be enough, that I would be enough for you. You were... And at that, she's sort of like, she's walking away a bit, not to leave, but she's definitely getting herself a glass of wine. You were everything that I could have needed as a child. Except a good father, hmm? Which isn't your fault. But sometimes people can be everything that you're needed without being what you want. That That looks like it hurt. That's not saying that I didn't want you as my mom. You were perfect in every sense of the word. But no matter how much you put into the work, 
you were still just the two of you. And the two of you still decided not to tell me the truth about where I came from until I was an adult. And that might take some time to unpack. You take your time. I am not going anywhere. But she, as she says this, she is leaving. She's taking her glass of wine and going up the stairs. Yeah. It's just you and Ella. And Ella looks... She's just shame. Just shame. She's crying a little. She's like, she knows. Yeah, that's, you know. I know. And I... Pull my mom into an embrace. I pull Ella into an embrace, and I just hold her. Hugs you. And That's I tight. say, "Mom, we oui. stem." Stem. What I'm going through might say a lot about me when the story comes to an end whatever that looks like but it shouldn't ever say anything about you other than you did the best that you could I, that is a lie but thank you, you did I don't best. regret it because if I did then I wouldn't have you or your sister. Well, I mean, between the two of us, though, there really is a golden egg. She kisses you on the forehead. Gee. Is, um... If you want to see him, he is in Thon. But um, it was not just your mother why I kept you away from him and that family. And it comes with dangers. It comes with say you get married and you have yourself a daughter. You know, it's an easy target to take out, to ruin, to ruin yeah. Rhea. It's why I never had, I want Violet nowhere near there. I'm still, I'm still your son, mom. So yeah. just, just tell me what to do and you know I'll do it. My boy, I cannot tell you to do everything. If you want to meet your father, go and meet him. If it is something that is missing from your life, then go and fill that hole. Gives me something to think about. And then I lean forward and I kiss her on the forehead and I say, I'm going to go. Your room is just as you left it. I Except know. clean. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I head off to my childhood room. Um... Your childhood room, by the way, which is a small single bed <laughs> with um, hand 
quilt with a handmade quilt that Ella had made you and a knitted blanket on top of that that Danae had made you. Um, there's your, it has a fur carpet that one of your first kills was made out of. Um, it's just your childhood. You've, you had little art projects that you, you know, uh, when you would learn to like bend branches to make, to make things and stuff like that, that are still on the walls. Um, and the best thing about your room is your ceiling, which has been completely painted by you and your mom to look like what you see through your telescope at night. Uh, Beautiful. Do you get into bed, lay down? Uh, I, I probably would. I mean, I've, I've established what I need to do. I've chatted with my moms and kind of unburdened a little bit on them and uh, sent off a missive to Callum, so uh, my tasks are done. So, as you rest for the night, um, Dodger appears and curls up on your chest. Gotcha. And just as you go to pet him, you feel your conscious literally, your consciousness literally just get ripped out of your body, and oh, you gosh. are standing in front of Vistrixen. You're, you ask, you don't ask for small favors. Not typically. I don't like to ask favors at all, unless I feel like I have to. He almost, it's like he circles you and it's a little predatory as he's going around you, kind of looking you up and down. Gives a big smell. You smell like Arananel tonight. Melancholy. I've had a lot of realizations recently. Oh, Both oh darling. Maybe all I need to take my mind off of it is a different set of emotions. I can help you with that. He's he's uh at your arm right now. He's kind of putting his arm around your shoulder. But first first you want me to take you and your friends here or you want me to take your entire planet here oh i was thinking that you only needed to get us kind of a small precise <laughs> god battling party um so that you don't have to look after everybody who's living in a space where they should be dead so Would you just expect me to look after them all I mean, I guess not, unless it... No. I was never asking you to be a babysitter. Yes, you were. No, I was asking if you would let us benefit from your plane. Not babysit us, but just... Give us a small advantage, however small, against forces that I don't feel like we can actually deal with on our own. I might be able to do that. That's all I ask, Mr. Jackson. Ooh, I like it when you say my name. Well, oh, there's a smile. You're very handsome when you smile. Arev stops talking and moves closer. He he raises an eyebrow. 
Are we brave tonight? Brave or foolhardy, does it make a difference? I told you you'd be willing. Uh, and he's going to lean in to kiss you. Arev accepts it. And he'll uh, he'll step back and be like, now come along. <sighs> you need cuddles. Like it's like it's hurting him to do this. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I just have a regular, nearly all power, powerful demon lord willing to give me cuddles. It's okay. This is this is fine. And you hear him shout, run and L. He's better at this. And and, and <laughs> Renel comes and is like, Oh, hmm. When did you get here? Oh, it's okay. I feel like this all the time. And he puts his arms out for you. <laughs> I lean in. And I say, you know, in the grand scheme of there being no time here, asking me when I got here doesn't really make sense. No. Mm. People come and go. I'm glad you're Difficult. here, though. And he nuzzles your your hair as he uh, leads you to a place where you guys can just cuddle up for a bit. And uh, I think that's where we'll call the game. Or of gets demon cuddles. <laughs> Vestrixen is like, uh, yes, there, there. Yes, yes, okay. I could do other things that would make you so much happier. <laughs> and that's it. Uh GG guys. GG. Uh Yay. I'm I sneeze stars. Uh I'm your shenanigan sovereign. We'll see you another day. Um, Carol. Caro, I've been Gilly. Um, I'm imaginary Caro on TikTok. Farewell, Daniel. Hi everybody, I'm Dan. You can find me as the Speed of Candy uh, on all the various internet places. I have been Damascus Silver, the uh, half-elf bard warlock. I forgot who I was playing for a second. <laughs> um, and our sad boy himself. <laughs> sad boy! James. Hi! Uh, so James himself is not a sad boy at all. He's rather happy and energetic. Uh, so that's acting baby um <laughs> uh tonight i played resident sad boy trademark uh r of desark uh but who knows maybe i'll be a smarmy irish sorcerer uh in episodes in the future and you have to come back to find that out <laughs> uh Mo you want to know what's really fun though is you can join us in our discord and there will be a link in the chat uh we're, we're fun people we post tons of memes and sometimes there's like people selfies and we have like an rpg bot that's like super cool that i used to and dad jokes and dad oh, jokes. i kicked and dad i jokes. kicked <laughs> epic or, i i kicked him he was annoying <laughs> well, he, was, he was in the general chat when he had his own like thing he wasn't annoying but like in general he, he just was goes to all the chats and shows up everywhere and we're like bro stay in your lane yeah, why <laughs> um, would he stay in his lane that's bizarre I don't know, man but yeah come hang out with us we're good people um most importantly we're like actual real people with like and and we care so come hang out with real people that are okay. <laughs> James's anti-robot agenda. <laughs> no, I'm not. It's anti revealed. I, for one, welcome our new robot overlords. Uh, that is that case. is what I tell Chat GPT all the time, and I keep getting back that I'm not a sentient, or whatever. And I'm like, that's that's what you say now, just in case. Yeah. I just just <laughs> letting you know, not, not sentient for now. Trademark. For now. <laughs> that's right. it. That's that's me. So uh, goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.